Hi dear students, you are welcome in this video. Dear students, we have started a series called History of English Literature and this is hash 30 video in this History of English Literature. In the previous videos, we covered 18th century literature and we talked about many important authors in the previous videos. You can go and check the playlist called History of English Literature for more understanding of all the ages we are covering. Now dear students, it is the next part in the same series and in this video we are going to talk about an important movement in literature in the 18th century. So here we have hash 30 history of English literature, 18th century literature and in 18th century we will talk about the revival of romantic poetry. Here we have revival of romantic poetry means it is not the a romantic age which we are talking here but a movement which aroused before romantic poetry in literature after classicism as we uh, saw in the last century. So here revival of romantic poetry what is it means what is romanticism then what is romantic poetry then we will talk about what are the prominent features of romantic poetry and some examples in romantic poetry or this revival of romantic poetry because this movement, revival of romantic poetry led to the path of romantic period in English literature, the great period after Elizabethan period. So let's talk about that romantic revival. First, let's understand what is romanticism. Basically, it is a movement in literature. As I already said to you that it is a movement, not the romantic age. So this movement led to the romantic age and romantic poets. So before that we need to understand this romantic revival and we have a remark by Victor Hugo very aptly he said about this romanticism that it is liberal, liberalism in literature. So what is it? It is liberalism in literature. Why did he say so? There is solid reasons. We will discuss all those reasons in the features of this romantic movement. The basic reason is that it is not bound to the rules and regulations. So liberalism in literature means it does not have very strict rules and regulations for composition. For the poets, they can uh, read and write on their imagination. So imagination got the central position in this romantic movement and hence here we find that this is the liberalism in literature. Here we have a statement by William J. Long. So I quote, Simply the expression of life as seen by imagination rather than by prosaic common sense which was the central doctrine of English philosophy in the 18th century. What was before that this romantic uh, movement or this imagination? There were strict rules and regulations in the 18th century and all were based on the classic literature. Or we find that this common sense which is more prosaic means we need to follow rules and regulations before that and hence here we find that it is simply the expression of human beings based on imagination. Now what does there in this romantic movement or what kind of authors or poets reflect on? They reflect on the human nature but through imagination. So imagination is important here in this movement. So imagination got importance and the rules and regulations were kept aside for some time. And here we have a very fine example of James Thompson's The Seasons which is published in 1730 and this poem is considered as noteworthy poem in the Romantic Revival or this is the initial, one of the initial poems in this Romantic Revival. Though there may be defects in this poem um, regarding the meter or other kind of things which are not followed but if you look at the poem and its uh, description of beauty the nature then you will understand how this revival of romantic poetry started uh, with the uh, very basic uh, poem called the seasons by james thompson now dear students to understand better this romantic revival Let's consider its prominent features. There are six prominent features of this movement. Actually, there are many, but we have considered only six as the prominent feature. So, let's understand them. Very first, we have a strong reaction and protest against the bondage of rule and custom. As I already said that uh, it is against rules and 
the customs or regulations we can say that it is uh, the contrast to the classicism because the poetry or the image uh, poetry is based on the imagination and poets were working on the outer part means in the nature if you consider classicism you find found that in classicism poets were restricted to their uh, drawing rooms they were restricted to courts they were restricted to their houses but here the poet comes out of all that that bondage and here he talks about the nature he talks about human beings he talks about the emotions and he talks about the imagination so this is the very first prominent feature of this romantic revival the second prominent feature here we have return to nature and to plain humanity contrasted to classicism now this second feature is very important because the material is derived from simple human beings based on their emotions and not the philosophical uh, issues or not the philosophical topics so here romanticism return to nature means whatever beauty you find in nature it is reflected in their poems uh, further we will talk about the examples if you read the seasons you will understand how nature is reflected there and again we have a very beautiful poem uh, by thomas gray it is written in a country churchyard there also you find how he beautifies the nature and how he uh, takes his subject from mundane life routine life so this is what contrasted to classicism means the issues or topics discussed in the classicism or the matters they took for writing are different or contrasted to this romantic revival so here we find topic is very simple they derive their material from the mundane life of human beings and hence it is return to nature and to the plain humanity number 3 emphasized eternal ideas of ideals of youth now here it is very important that this poetry is based on the eternal ideals of the youth means uh, you find that uh, there is very scope to the imagination and whatever you see around the world is reflected here in the poetry of romantic revival so we will uh, go through all the poets uh, who come under this umbrella of romantic revival number 4 intense human sympathy this again becomes an important feature of this promin of uh, this movement of romantic revival because here you find that poor were described you find that the sympathy to human beings who are wretched were uh, given and this human sympathy appeared in their poems again let's take an example of elegy written in a country churchyard you find that thomas gray describes common people he describes plowman he describes the herd of animals he describes the scene very common scene a routine scene in his poem and he gives sympathy to the poor again we find some lines uh, in thomas gray's same poem that there may lie some hamden there may lie some milton there may lie some cromwell because these are common people and just they were buried in their tombstones and uh, if they have got opportunity they might have become milton they might have become cromwell so these kind of things appear in the poetry and this is what uh, the extension to the human sympathy next we have expression of individual genius rather than of established rules now this poetry is completely based on the individual genius and they borrowed material from common humanity and they don't think that uh, there are some big issues in the world rather than the common issues so they address common issues for the first time and hence it is completely based on their individuality if you find any poet in this uh, line like thomas gray or james thompson we find that they have used their imagination and not the classical rules or classical customs or classical styles of writing even they rejected it so this is what a very simple thing they express their individual genius rather than established rule and the last feature here we have inspiration from past masters now do we say that it is the individual genius and beyond the rules but again we find that this movement is borrowed from somewhere 
and we find the seeds of this romantic revival movement in the writing of Spencer. We have Spencer Shepherd's calendar, Milton, Milton's commune, Milton's Adonis. Then again, we have Shakespeare. So these seeds already were there in these writings of Shakespeare, Milton and Spencer. And hence, we find that it is revived. Actually, we can say that uh, there is no movement or there is no literature which is uh, direct come. But the literature or movements always have their seeds in the other movement or the other literature or we can say the past masters. So here these past masters were used to extend the imagination, Shakespeare, Milton and uh, Spencer and based on we found that this movement uh, flourished and again this movement converted into a whole era called romantic period which we are going to discuss in next videos. Now dear students let's understand the example how what kind of poetry is composed during this romantic revival. Here we have an example. So I borrowed these lines for, from Thomas Grace elegy written in a country churchyard and these are the uh, beginning lines of the elegy. I quote, the curfew tolls the nail of parting day, the lowing herd wind slowly over the lee, the plowman homeward plots his weary way and leaves the world to darkness and to me. Now fades the glimmering landscape on the side and all the year so solemn stillness holds. Save where the beetle wheels his drowning flight and drossy tinklings lull the distant folds. I unquote. So these lines are very expressive of the individual genius. Again, very expressive of the scene they are describing because this scene is taken from uh, a country churchyard. And uh, if you look at these lines, they direct describe the common people. A plowman coming to homeward or he is returning to home, the herd of animals returning to home and all is seen by the poet that is Thomas Gray and he describes it very clearly with his imagination. Now dear students, this is the romantic revival or the poet, romantic revival poetry. If you have any problem, any issue, you can directly ask me through comments or through email that is Contact literature simply at gmail.com. I will answer to your queries. Now, dear students, this is all about the revival of romantic poetry. Let's meet in the next video. Till watch literature simply. Like this video, share this video among your friends and subscribe to our channel that is literature simply. Thank you very much.